Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle, from tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride. Let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 103. Email the show, pedalshift at pedalshift.net, and call the voicemail hotline, 202-930-1109. You can check Pedal Shift out also on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another edition of the Pedal Shift Project. I'm Tim Mooney, and I'm excited to be bringing this episode of the show to you. We're going to be talking about handling being sick on tour. There are so many people around me right now, (laughs) it feels like, that are either getting the flu or just that usual winter kind of malaise, illness, colds, uh, things like that. I thought this would be a good time to talk about dealing with being sick on tour. It happens from time to time. Especially if you're on longer tours and you're going through some weather, um, you, your your body's in a more precarious position, so it might be uh, exposed to more viruses and things like that. So I thought it would be a good time to chat about handling being sick on tour. So we'll be getting to that in a few minutes. Just wanted to do a quick reminder that a few slots are open for Winter Bicycle Tour Consulting. That's over at pedalshift.net slash consulting. If you're interested in some personal help and planning your upcoming tour, go check out uh, that there, pedalshift.net slash consulting, Pedalshift Society members, keep an eye open. I've got an email coming to you with a special thank you discount for your support of the show. So check that out. Um, this is also the season for getting your touring bike tuned up. Check with your local bike shop. I um, have one here, my, my sort of local bike shop of choice. I love to give him a plug from time to time. It's Bicycle Space here in D.C., they have a great winter season uh, deal on tune-ups and overhauls, and I know that this is the case all across the country, uh, especially places that tend to really have more wintry type weather um, here in the U.S. and Canada. Um, some of them change over to, to skiing shops, actually. I know that to be the case. But if your local bike shop is still open year-round, I would really recommend checking it out, especially if your bike is, uh, say, not shifting so well or uh, all sorts of different things uh, that they could handle that maybe you can't. There, there are a lot of things that require special tools that you might not have on hand. You may be handy at de- dealing with flats or doing some simple stuff, but need a bigger hand on other things. That certainly is where I fall in uh, that category. So uh, check it out. Um, I'm getting my big touring bike, uh, basically a close to a full overhaul. I do it about once every two years, every year during the season, I take advantage of the winter special to do kind of a minor tune-up, but about every two years, it tends to need a more, we'll call it a radical redesign. You know, things like uh, a brand new cassette, new chain, things like that. Stuff that just wears down based on mileage that you put on your touring bike. So go check that out. I think it's a good time of year to consider doing that. Next episode, we're going to be covering winter bike maintenance, Um, things that you can do now while you might be biking less or not at all, and then maybe a couple of things that uh, are specific to winter, uh, especially if you're riding around even just periodically in the salt. I know that my Brompton when I ride it around, it seems to suffer from salt exposure a lot more than my other bike. And I don't know why that is. It's probably just the components uh, that are being impacted. But um, I do different things during the winter, um, even though I ride a lot less, uh, just because of the nature of what things are exposed to. So uh, episode 104, we'll be talking about winter bike maintenance. I hope you stick around for that. I hope you don't ever need this advice, uh, handling being sick on tour. Um, It is no fun (laughs) at all to feel less than 100% when you are out on a bicycle tour. That probably goes without saying. I also know that many of you have had to deal with this while you've been out there. Um, I have not been full on sick before, although I I do know that I've had one situation where I uh, bonked uh, in, let's see, it was near Santa Cruz, and I was not feeling good at all and utilized some of these methods here that I'm going to be talking about to handle that I'll call it an illness. Of course, you know, that that was more just <laughs> lack of water and resources in my system. But it all kind of is the same idea. It's when your body is going to be behaving a little bit less than appropriately because of some external factor. In this case, it's going to be usually viruses. Um, the number one thing that I would say about dealing with being sick on tour is you've got to give your body a chance to rest. That is 
often a, an issue in the bicycle touring context, particularly if you are a person like me who tends to be a bit of a planner and you're thinking, oh, well, on this day, I'm going to do 60 miles and then the next day I'm going to do 59 and then the day after that, I'm going to do 75. If you're in a situation where you've really planned out your tour, telling yourself and giving yourself the permission to take a day off, take a zero day, or even to just take a half day just to rest more, sleep in a little bit more, that can sometimes be really difficult. But I think that um, I'm going to quote my mom, which I think I rarely do on this pod, um, rest is the best medicine. (laughs) I just, I really think it's the case. I have often been in a situation, whether I'm at home or on the road, where I have felt terrible. And I will just shut it down, go to sleep, and I wake up feeling a lot, lot better. Sometimes rest really is the trick for all things. It sort of is your body's reboot mechanism. You know, you know, when you've got an issue with your computer, often you're asking your IT folks, uh, and she'll say to you, Re- have you restarted your computer? And that is the trick. That's the thing that fixes things. So um, I would say rest is your number one goal, your number one remedy anytime you're feeling under the weather when you're out cycling. That can be a little bit tricky sometimes, of course, too. You may, you're fully loaded perhaps, um, and you are going to have to pitch a tent or something along those lines. Uh, in a situation where you're not feeling good and rest is the the ticket for you, that might be the time to consider getting accommodations that are an upgrade from a tent, shall we say. Um, a good example is somebody that I ran into way back in the day, and I think I talked about this guy before. I hope to talk about him again because he's a good story. Uh, Mysterious James and I, on one of our West Coast bike tours, ran into a guy who was the viola player for uh, movies you've heard of. Uh, he, he played the viola on uh, the soundtracks for things like Titanic and stuff like that. Totally random, but very interesting dude. Um, he, we ran into, he was in this ultralight setup, um, so he could and did camp. He ended up camping with us one night. But he had been sick for a couple of days and actually holed up in a hotel. He 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 was just like he was more uh, in the credit card touring type of mode, and he uh, was sick and needed to shut it down. He was super fast, but he got sick, so he shut it down for a couple of days and got a lot better. And so I think that if you've got the ability in your budget, you've got the ability where you're at. Some of you may be touring in places you might be doing more of a bike packing trip where there are no indoor accommodation options. But that's the time to start thinking about maybe having a place that's warm, having a real bed, things like that. Um, it's it's worth it. It's a good investment in the rest of your tour to get healthier quicker. And sometimes having that rest and sometimes even getting that hotel room if you need it, that Airbnb, that warm showers, any of those types of things is probably the best bet for you to kick being sick or at least to get to a road where you're a little bit more improved so that your performance can be better on the road the rest of the way. Next thing up on uh, handling being sick on tour, I'm going to call this the magic of ibuprofen. Um, I know that not everybody loves loves ibuprofen. Uh, that's that's Advil. Uh, there's, it goes by a whole bunch of different names, of course, but ibuprofen is the generic. It is ridiculously inexpensive, at least here in the States. It probably is elsewhere as well. It's a generic drug now. It is not a wonder drug <laughs> of any in any way, shape, or form. But I will say at its anti-inflammatory nature can be really, really helpful for so many things that ail you. Um, you want to be careful with this, of course. Ibuprofen is not an appropriate solution for everything. So, you know, uh, if you've got, if you're sick enough that you need a doctor, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of go ahead of myself here, go see the doctor. Um, but if this is something that's in the normal wheelhouse of your experiences being sick and you know that taking some ibuprofen will help get rid of those aches and pains, I'd say, I say do it. Inflammation response is one of those things in my experience that if I let something go and just say, uh, I don't need to take anything. I'll just gut it out. What I find is that the inflammation itself creates more inflammation. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's scientifically accurate or not. It's just sort of my personal experience that if I can knock something out with an anti-inflammatory like an ibuprofen, 
tend to feel a lot better a lot quicker, and it doesn't tend to linger nearly as long. Uh, so uh, consider the magic of ibuprofen if that's your bag. There are some more natural things out there. I know turmeric has some anti-inflammatory uh, properties, so if you're into uh, things that are less than ibuprofen, or if you are, I mean, there's a lot of you out there who cannot take ibuprofen. It's not good for you because of a whole bunch of different factors that you may or may not have. So um, the magic of ibuprofen or whatever is your bag. Next up is hydration and nutrition. I talked about the bonk that I had outside of San, uh, Santa Cruz, um, and that was all about not being smart and balanced with what I was taking in. And I think that one of the most important things you can do in terms of handling being sick is to avoid being sick in the first place. So really watch yourself in terms of the hydration and really watch yourself in terms of what you're taking into your body because very often we can be in the middle of a common cold and, you know, have, have that, that, that stuffed upness, that congestion, all of those types of things, but you can battle through it and you can cycle through that kind of stuff. But if you let your nutrition, your hydration go, all of a sudden that's just going to let things get much worse when it comes to whatever you're battling through. So I would say hydration and nutrition can help you avoid things in the first place by having a stronger immune system that can battle back from exposure to these various viruses and whatnot, but it can also help when you're in the middle of it a little bit to be able to just to combat the effects. Um, I'm not one of those people that say, oh, take lots of vitamin C. That's going to help stop the cold. I mean, it really doesn't. It just makes your pee yellow. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, you know, making sure that you are well hydrated and are eating well, that's going to help you in either side of those things. Either it might help your immune system uh, be in a situation where it can kind of stop the virus from getting into you in the first place, that's a major, major uh, um, uh, short shortcut of t- saying that. Is that what I'm trying to say? That, that's, that's, a, that's a short shrift way of saying it. Um, or if you are suffering through a cold, it can help you battle back some of the effects. So uh, consider all of that as you're going along. I, that kind of goes without saying as well. Um, I talked about investing and taking the zero day um, before. One day off can really improve your efficiencies on the road. I think that it is a subset of rest, but I think it's obviously something that's even more than just a, uh, getting in your rest. I mean, you can always just have rest by... Uh, taking a couple of hours off at the end of a day, maybe not going as many miles as you were expecting. But investing in a zero day can be a really important thing. Um, sometimes I've done that based on weather. In fact, I think most of the times I've ever done zero days, it's generally been because of weather. But you know, if you're not feeling right, um, and you feel something coming on, you can actually maybe find a way to fight that off by giving your body a chance to really battle it back. Bicycle touring is not exactly what I'd say ideal for your immune system. I mean, yes, exercise is really good, but, um, you know, it's taking resources uh, that your body is using and putting it towards exercise and moving your body over dozens, if not a hundred miles in one shot. So sometimes taking that zero day is a good investment for the rest of your tour. And last but not least, I talked about this before, don't put off seeing a doctor for anything that's a real illness or a real injury that doesn't respond to a day off. Um, I I am the worst person in the world to say, hey, you should go to a doctor because as Kimberly, my girlfriend, would attest, I very rarely go to the doctor. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. I'm reasonably healthy. I don't have any complaints, but I'm getting to that age where I should probably go to a doctor more often and I should probably go to a doctor more often if I'm feeling under the weather, um, if things aren't responding to a day off or to rest or to normal types of um, treatments for normal types of illnesses. So um, take it with a grain of salt coming from a guy who doesn't go to a doctor very often. But if you are out there and you're on tour and something weird is happening, something that is unusual, I really recommend trying to find somebody as quickly as possible. I know that that can get into expense, especially if you're traveling without insurance or uh, any of the ver- variety of different things. We here in the States have a different relationship with the healthcare system than I know other parts of the world uh, that uh, to our to our detriment at times. So, you know, uh, you have to use your best judgment in all of this, but I would say you only have one life and one health Uh, if that's an actual phrase, (laughs) I would say make sure you take care of yourself if you are not feeling right and you need some help from a medical professional, get out there and do that. 
So that's basically what I've got for handling being sick on tour. It's a lot of common sense, just, you know, focusing on a rest, utilizing a medication that is relevant and uh, it makes sense for you, especially if it's kind of simple stuff like normal aches and pains, making sure that you are taking care of yourself in terms of eating and drinking water, um, investing in taking those zero days off, and then, of course, making sure that you see medical professionals if you need it. I'm curious if uh, any of you have battled through illness when you've been on bicycle tour, shoot me an email, uh, pedalship to pedalship.net, because I'd love to share that. This is kind of the season where we get a little bit more of the illness kind of talk. Um, and I'm curious how people have dealt with that while you are on tour. Uh, give me a holler and we'll share it on a future show. We look to close out the show every time with a big thank you to all of the supporters of the show through the Pedal Shift Society. If you like what you hear, you can help maintain Pedal Shift as an independent listener supported voice while expanding the offerings. We're talking five bucks, two bucks, or even a dollar a month. Helps with the cost of hosting the podcast, the website, and you can do it and cancel any time. One Shot Support's welcome as well. We've got all of that at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Ethan Georgie, Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lane, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Josiah Matthews, Keith Nagel, Brock Dittus, Thomas Skadow, Seth Krieger, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Noah Schroer, Harry Telgatis, John Sikorsky, Richard Killian, Chris Barron, Brian Wren, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Paul Mulvey, Stuart Buckin, Todd Stutz, Mr. T, Roxy Arning, Nathan Poulton, Harry Hugel, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Ruth Divorcey, Michelle Miller, Matthew Lewis, Michael Baker, Billy Crafton, Paul Culbertson, Scott Culbertson, Matt Perry, Danielle Jepson, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Bobby Rupel, Roy Everett, Greg Braithwaite, John Mayer, William Cairns, and Sandy Pizio. And thank you all to past and anonymous contributors for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.